Hi, it's Shannon Wilkie, owner of the Shine Advocacy Group. I'm an education advocate here in Arizona. And today I have Jennifer with. Jennifer, would you care to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Jennifer Weatherford. I am a psychiatric nurse practitioner. I'm trained in both counseling and medication management, but most of my focus is on medication management and tailoring treatments to each of my clients' specific needs. Uh, before I was a psychiatric nurse practitioner, I worked for 12 years as a registered nurse for Banner Health in Arizona. I've worked in a variety of settings in the hospital, mostly like critical care, oncology, just a bunch of different areas. Okay. I have two bachelor's degrees, one in nursing and one in physiology, and I have a master's degree in nursing, which solely focused on psychiatry and uh, nurse practitioner. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Awesome. I am so happy you're here today because when we work with families and they're going through the process, so what we do is we help them understand their students' needs at school. Some of them are just getting educational eligibility. They don't know much about the disability and they're asking us questions. What do we do next? Do we go to a psychologist? Do we go to a psychiatrist? Um, and I know that both you and I know each other from um, I help administer, I help admin a local Facebook Facebook group for parent support called Look a Squirrel. And in that group, um, we, we ran into each other and it, it's a question that we get often in there too. What's the difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist? Right, That's and I get that a lot too. Sometimes I have people call and ask for appointments. I'm like, I just wanna make sure that I understand what you're looking for. But sometimes they do just want therapy. And so in which case I usually will refer them to one of the therapists we have in our office. Um, but I primarily focus on medication management because I can spend easily 30 minutes to an hour talking about just symptoms and medications. And it's really important that I, um, you know, make sure I focus on that and get that right for each person. So, um, but yeah, as you said, I know you from the, the Look a Squirrel group. Um, I actually have been on that for many years since my son was young. He's now 15. My son has ADHD. And so that's how I actually ended up on the group. And so I have like a special spot in my heart <laughs> for kids with ADHD. So I've, in many ways, that's sort of become my niche. Um, in psychiatry, I work with a lot of children and teenagers with um, ADHD and anxiety disorders. I absolutely love working with kids. So it's quickly becoming like my, my little niche in that area. So, um, but yeah, it's been a really good being part of that group and working with you. It's, uh, I found it being like really great for um, a lot of helpful resources and just having like you as an advocate, like run the group. It, you answer so many great questions that people have when they're having a hard time with schools and getting their kids the services they need. So I feel like it's been really helpful uh, for me personally to be a part of the group. And then also it's nice now to be kind of on the other end and be able to work with you to that we can both help but you know, the kids that we work with together. Well, thank you. Yeah, and I really love the when the passion of the personal collides with professional experience, right? So same, we have the same background. Um, my son also has ADHD and, so not only do we understand it from a professional view, but we get it as parents. And I think that really is important. Um, and what I what makes you stand out um, from me going to many psychologists and psychiatrists over the years is you had reached out and I've read some of the emails that you help your client, your patients um, support to get help at school. And it's really impactful when the education community kind of um, is supported by the outside professionals. I think schools really value that. They like to hear the outside services and what your medical ex expertise is stating. So I've seen you, you know, help write letters of support for 504s and IEPs and evaluations. And I think that's awesome that you take that extra step. I don't always see that. So I'm sure it's appreciated. So in, in your explanation, I think that's the biggest question I get with the, the models. What's the difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist? So um, as you said, you do the medication and you generally work. Tell us a little bit more about the, the patients you work with. So I heard anxiety, I heard ADHD. What about the, the age and the other diagnoses that you work with? Um, we work with pretty much everything from like autism, ADHD, depression, to schizophrenia, like it's a whole spectrum. So we're trained in pretty much everything. 
Um, a lot of providers won't see younger children, but I, I love kids, so I don't mind seeing I see children as young as five, typically. Um, that doesn't mean I'm always going to be, um, you know, pushing for medications. It really depends on the kiddo and, like, what the family's goals are. So, but um, frequently, you know, a lot of times it's just to diagnose and kind of evaluate the symptoms and see what's going on. But, yeah, so I, I, I do a thorough evaluation. I get to know the kiddo. I get to know the parents. And then um, we kind of figure out what the goals are. And then uh, I, I formulate a diagnosis if appropriate, you know, based on symptoms. And then we go from there. And, and then my goal is basically to help them achieve whatever their goals are. If medications are needed, then we, we talk about different medications. And, and sometimes I even like to really use, I love supplements. I'll use whatever works. Whatever, whatever I can get out of my toolbox that's going to work, I'm going to do it. So I'm, I'm open to like, if parents only want to use supplements, we can try that. Um, I really try to work around what people's goals are. And I also know that, you know, when kids are in school, that that's really important. That's why I'm really big on working with you and making sure that I write strongly worded letters if need be to make sure the kids get the resources they need, you know, in school as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Just the, the education and medical model, because I hear so much in 504 and IEP meetings. So when the students we work with get help at school, it, the formal plan is called a 504 and IEP. And so many times the parent will be saying, no, but uh, our psychiatrist diagnosed this medical diagnosis, we need help. And they'll be met with, well, the medical model and the educational model are different, which is true. Um, and so my area of expertise is the education model, but I think that I've seen the most success when it's supported by the medical model. When someone from outside kind of puts the school on notice that this child has this, this disability Ability. It's affecting them at school. You're hearing about it in your sessions. So let's get them the help needed formally. And that's the most impactful way. So that's, that's awesome. And really good to know that you also go through the evaluation process with parents and that you kind of meet them where they're at because, you know, many choose to use meds, many prefer supplements and sometimes both. That's what our family uses. So mm -hmm. That's awesome. Same for us. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, whatever works. <laughs> exactly. Anything to, to help bring up those legging skills. So if a family was looking for ongoing therapy um, and, and talk therapy or cognitive behavioral therapy, you would refer them to someone in your practice? Yeah, we do have. We actually just hired two new therapists. It's, it's so hard to find therapists that see children. It's kind of yeah. like shocking how difficult it is. Um, so we did hire two new therapists that see, um, I think they see as young as nine or 10, right. um, which is good. So that's helpful, but they do definitely see teenagers and adolescents, which there's a big demand for that as well. Um, and then if they're full, I have other referrals I can, I can send them to, or, and also we, um, I have some family therapists that I, I refer people to if they have young children and that, you know, they need to do like family therapy because like, um, you know, sometimes the therapists aren't comfortable working with families if they have, you know, kids and really young kids and adults, it can be a little bit more challenging. Yeah. So I do have a list of resources of people that I can refer them to, which is definitely helpful. Well, thank you for taking on the hard stuff. I've had many practitioners tell me over the years that, oh, we don't need to work with kids. It's too tough, too much, too many moving parts. The diagnoses are still emerging. It's too difficult. So thank you for, for taking that on. And for those um, located in the Phoenix area. So unfortunately, Jennifer only um, can work with clients and patients, I keep saying clients, in Arizona, um, and you are located on Lindsay and Pecos, if I remember correctly? Right, and Gilbert. Mm -hmm. Gilbert, awesome. And then what is your practice name? It's called Core Connect Wellness Center. Okay. Sounds yeah. And good, I'm, right? the, I'm the only psychiatric nurse practitioner there. The other um, people that work there, I work with um, five other therapists that see all different ages. And then there's also a naturopath. So if that does a variety of things, so sometimes if people are really, you know, if we, if I've kind of reached my limit, as far as things that I can do with alternative supplements, I'm happy to refer to the naturopath and see if we can try something with him. That's great that there's so many options under one roof. And do you um, find that you work with um, students up to us. I'm in the education model right in my head. Sorry. <laughs> Patients up to a certain age. I heard you say five. So you work with really young kids. And then what's the oldest um, child or young adult you would work with? Oh, I, I go all the way up through adults. I'm probably okay. up to like, you know, 50, 60. You know, it's not, I don't have like a limit on how high I'll go. It's more, more how low I'll go. <laughs> 
Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it seems like I'm getting more and more calls from um, parents of, with kids with um, younger children, like, you know, five to like teenagers, a lot of teenagers. Yeah. Um, and I do, I do love working with teenagers too. I have a lot of empathy for the challenges that kids go through today and the COVID, you know, the whole COVID debacle that they had to survive. So I really, I really feel like it was a, a big challenge for a lot of teenagers. So I'm seeing a lot of teenagers in practice as well. Us too. We had such a huge uptake. I would say 80% of our new clients last year were teenagers because of what they've been going through or they just they were getting by right until online education mm -hmm. and um they maybe had anxiety that was managed and then i mean i can't yeah. imagine navigating last year with the diagnosis of anxiety or depression it was hard enough without so that's awesome that you work with teenagers and and also we're seeing there's a lot more awareness of adhd because groups like look a squirrel or other you know educators are more aware so we're seeing more students find out that they have adhd or that they have anxiety or they have even a reading disability at a, a older age and that's a lot to to grapple with that's a lot to deal with so i'm glad you're there to help get them the answers that they need so what kind of evaluations um do you conduct um so i just kind of start out with kids it's um i have like a fidget box in my office um it's got all kinds of fun little fidget toys kids actually really it's really kind of fun because they can play while we talk I don't like, I don't want them to feel like I'm this weird adult that's kind of putting them on the spot. Yeah. So I pretty much start just by asking them about, you know, school and, you know, do they have pets and siblings and what their favorite food is? And, you know, I ask them a bunch of different questions like that before we dive into, you know, um, questions like, tell me things that make you mad, tell me things that make you sad. Um, and then we kind of go from there. And, and then I also have a pretty thorough intake packet that I have parents fill out before. And that really helps me kind of determine like what are the main issues that they're seeing um, that we need to kind of focus on. Then I kind of focus my interview um, based on what the parents are seeing and kind of the symptoms that they're they're seeing and you know at home and struggles they're having at school. And then I kind of uh, you know tailor my basically figure out what the symptoms are and then figure out the treatment based on that. Okay. It's definitely not a one size fits all. <laughs> I don't have like a go to for anything. <laughs> I, I, it's definitely very much based on the individual and, you know, what, what the goals are and what, what are some of the issues that we're dealing with. Yeah, for sure. And then if they needed to have further evaluation, say in autism, would mm -hmm. you refer them out to? I do, yeah, if I, if I suspect that. And then sometimes, you know, the schools do a pretty thorough evaluation as well mm -hmm. and can, you know, kind of help to, because there's a pretty long wait to get kids evaluated for autism um, with like developmental pediatricians and psychiatrists that specialize. So I, a lot of times we'll refer to schools and, and they do, you know, this, the psychologists do those battery of tests that take hours and hours and they're pretty darn thorough and they can definitely see the red flags and, you know, get the support services at least started. And I can help with some of the treatment in the meantime, kind of thing. That's awesome. And that's what I was talking about. The, the, the medical and education model when they work well together is an awesome thing and i always cringe when clients reach out to us and they've already spent three four thousand dollars out of pocket and waited on a wait list for a good year to go through the autism evaluations or any kind of educational evaluations that you know psych ed type evaluations because it is their right at school to have evaluations if they suspect a disability that's affecting the student at school so absolutely absolutely and that's why i'm happy to write those strong worded letters and yeah. then i frequently <laughs> refer my clients to you and then sometimes I even reach out to you and say how does this letter look yeah. <laughs> and make sure that I the wording is correct and that it's you know written so that we will get the services or at least the evaluation that we're requesting yeah. yeah that's the first step it's different like years ago I think I started my company six years ago and we could just say you know to the school can you please evaluate and and most of the time they would and now we're finding that with the law shifting they can deny evaluation so the parent knows there's something going on and are denied before they get very far in the process at all so that letter of medical support greatly helps so i'm so glad we got a chance to talk and we will put some resources below with your um, psychology today profile is there any other or any other tidbits or parting words or resources you want to share? Um, not that I can think of. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.
Yeah, thank you so much. We'll see you in the Look a Squirrel group and I'll post your Psychology Today profile below um, in the comments if anybody's looking for a nurse practitioner or psychiatrist. There's one right in our neighborhood. All right, thank you. Thank you, take care, bye.